Welcome to the Attic of Orphan Pictures. I am your host, Philip Mershon. You know, last time out, we had the pre-code prohibition hotsy totsies with Party Girl, but today we're cruising right into the middle of the Eisenhower administration with some real Eisenhower era storytelling. Our orphan picture is Hot Rod Girl from 1956. And just like the pre-sexual revolution 1950s, it promises something more wildly progressive than it's conservatively prepared to give. The promise, chiefly, is the title. The titular character of Lisa Vernon, played by Lori Nelson, is introduced to us at the San Fernando drag strip behind the wheel of her 55 modified stock T-Bird at the starting line next to a Jaguar XK120. The track announcer is going on about how she's well known in the drag racing community. She's a champ. Oh boy. The race starts and sure enough, she cruises along, crossing the finish line a good three, four lengths ahead of the Jag. Oh boy. We cut to the spectators filing out and her boyfriend, Jeff Northrup, played by John Smith, has the line. Well, that's it for today. How prophetic. Turns out, that's it for the rest of the picture. Lisa is never seen piloting her hot rod again. Instead, she settles into being the dutiful support, nudge, and helpmate to boyfriend Jeff. In its way, this thing is a western on wheels. It, its town sheriff is played by the rifleman himself, Chuck Connors. Here he's the detective Ben Merrill, the local cop who has organized the off-road drag strip where the kids of the community can race their rods without terrorizing the town's streets. The townsfolk, in this case, are the teenagers who drag race and hang out at yo-yos, which is supposed to be a teen hangout, but looks to me for all the world like a redressed cocktail roadhouse, or for the purposes of my simile, the saloon. And any good Western, there's got to be that black-hatted bully, the bad stranger who walks into town like he owns the place and commences to disrupt the general tranquility. And in our case, He's the black leather jacketed Mark Andrews in the role of, is this Western enough for you, Bronk Talbot. One of our good guy teens is played by 23-year-old comedian and impersonator Frank Gorshin in his first credited role in a feature picture. And early on, Gorshin proves his talent for mimicry with a Cagney impersonation for the kids. He plays the role of Flat Top, which is odd because his hair is too wavy and way too thinning to be cut into a flat top. In fact, Chuck Connors is the only flat top sporting actor in the whole thing. Yo-Yo, played by Fred Essler, is for me a little too angry to be the stereotypical big-hearted malt shop proprietor like Bernard Gorsi's Louie in the Bowery Boy pictures or Al Molinero's Al DeVecchio in Happy Days. Also of note is Roxanne Arlen, who is hilarious in the role of LP, which is short for long play, because just like that type of record, she goes on and on and on. My favorite element in the picture, almost a character of itself, is the music. It's by Alexander Sandy Courage, who had a long and prestigious career in composing and conducting for pictures, everything from the 1949 MGM Little Women to the Star Trek fanfare. Here he has penned some great generic instrumental motion picture teenage rock and roll that absolutely sends the kids. Shot on a Dime by Nasarima Productions, which is America spelled backwards, it's a swell little representation of that short-lived genre of the hot rod picture. And I'm going to stay right here while you watch, and I'll have a couple more thoughts to wrap up afterwards. So gas up your jalopies for Hot Rod Girl. Have 
his time. Northrop brothers aren't the only drivers of the strip, you know. Maybe Lisa's name will be Northrop before too long, right, Jeff? <laughs> We're working on it. That finishes another day's racing. Well, that's it for today. Yeah, these meets are always over too quick. Yeah, but with your heavy foot, the guy would think you were trying to race your way to Indianapolis in the 500. We're working on that, too. You guys got more plans than an architect. Spectators for their fine cooperation. Take it easy going home. Play it safe on the road. Same as we do here on the strip. Hey, here's Lisa. Great going, Lisa. Thanks, Jeff. I got nothing but exhaust poison. Pretty fair for a stock job. Now, there's the compliment I was waiting for. Don't mind him. He's on cloud nine. And why not? A new track record. And I was just getting started. Now, if I had another mile, You'd really have seen something. A quarter mile drag strip is putting the crimp on our champ style. Oh, you just get flying and boom, the finish line clips your wings. That's the idea. Okay, I know. Slow and easy, easy and slow. Just remember it. Yes, sir. This has really been your day. Two of your cars, tops in their class. Oh, not my cars. Who are you kidding? This here rod would never have revved up the way it did if you hadn't doped out a new combination on these four barrel pots. And uh, what about the porting on my motor? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. You two drive them, and I'll try to keep them running. And Northrop Monopoly. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Can I come into the winner's circle? Clam up, you squares. It's the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, huh? Hi, Ben. Congratulations. What do you say, Ben? Lisa. Hi, Ben. Thanks. Thanks, Gordon. This was a 
the best meat yet. And the biggest. We had a real jam in the inspection line. Yeah, and did you get a load of all those stock car cowboys? Now, be generous, Steve. We can't all own hot rods like yours. I'll try and get some more volunteers for the inspection line. We're growing so fast, I can't keep up. In spite of the city council and the other sawheads who are trying to stop us, huh? Which reminds me, I've got a date with the captain. You are still riding about us and the strip? Let's say the captain is uh, slow to surrender a dearly held prejudice. I'll see you later. And take it easy going home. Sure. sure. So long, Ben. So long, Bye. Ben. You caught up in heading for yo-yos? OK. How about you, Steve? Gee, I'd, I'd like to. But every time I come to the strip, Aunt Sarah puts a stopwatch on me. I can see her now sitting at the window biting her nails. Ah, oh, come on. So it'll be another half hour. Besides, she's got long nails. <laughs> <laughs> Will you square it with her? Aunt Sarah stops me, kid. Boy. Well, I'd be glad that I'm old enough to move in with you. She's strictly horse and buggy. She doesn't dig hot rods at all. Give her time, Steve. She's young. <laughs> See you at yo-yos. So long. Hey, Jeff. How about riding with me? There's a ping I want you to catch. Can you spare him, Lisa? But be careful with him. We guarantee safe delivery. See you at yo-yos. talk all day, Ben, but I've seen too much of it. You know, I've handled this accident investigation in detail a good many years. It's hard for me to believe that we're going to stop teenage violations by encouraging hot rodders. If you'd only come out to this strip with me, Captain, get to know these kids. Oh, thanks. That's your right. headache. We're drawing in more kids every weekend. Now, more kids on the drag strip means fewer on the streets. All right, but you've got your chance. Personally, I can't buy it. I'm not going to stand in your way. Yeah, I know. And I appreciate it. You've been under plenty of pressure. Pressure? Some of the calls I get must melt the relays. Close the strips. Confiscate all hot rods. Fire that crackpot Ben Merrill. It's like a broken record. <laughs> no. But teaching those solid, loudmouth citizens to respect the hot rodders who are law-abiding is rougher than educating kids. I don't hear it. It's nowhere at this speed. If I could open it up. Next time we're at the strip. You know, there's never time enough to do what you really want. Yeah, you're doing OK. Well, that'll make Aunt Sarah very happy. She gave me a special trophy room in the ash can. <laughs> Believe me, Jeff, living with her is like driving with your brakes on. Just a few more years to wait. Wait. Slow down. Stop. That's the story of my life. Kid, your fuel mix is too rich. Ease it off, huh? Who's that squirrel? I don't know. What's he trying to prove? Ignore him.
teacher, social worker, public relations counsel, and wet nurse. <laughs> You're not the type, Captain. But you have to admit, a city-sponsored drag strip has cut the accident rate in other towns. And you know it'll do the same for us if they give us time. Don't keep educating me. I'm riding along with you. Just keep those kids of yours clean. You might even make a hot rod out of me. If I survive. <laughs> Come on, buy a cup of coffee. Yes? Where? All right. Yes, Merrill's with me. We'll be right there. What is it? Crash, 45th and High. Two hot rodders. Street racing. Any of our kids? The Northrop brothers. Sorry, Ben. Hey, don't be too tough on the kid. It wasn't his fault. This other guy ranked him into it. You know how kids are. Steve's okay, isn't he? Isn't he? driver was. <laughs> this the other kid in the death car? Yes, sir. <laughs> what about the hot rod you were racing? No one seems to be able to identify it, Captain. The dead boy, your brother? <laughs> Folks been notified? <laughs> the parents are dead. The younger boy lived with his aunt. Your brother being a minor, you were responsible for him. Yet you let him speed, throw away his life. But Jeff tried to stop him. There'll be a hearing, Judge Walker. Is it all right if I take Jeff home now? Come on, we can go home. <laughs> Jeff, please. Real hopped up death trap. Plain luck, no innocent people were killed. How oh, that kid loved this car. The paper's gonna love this. They'll murder us. Teenage kid killed in the street race on his way home from your fancy drag strip. Makes us look like we're helping them kill themselves. Beats me why Judge Walker gave you the kid glove treatment, Northrop. Picking up your license, paroling into this office. Plenty of people wanted him to throw the book at you. Lucky you've got a good friend. 
You ought to report weekly to this office, and you're not to drive a car under any circumstances. Your compliance with our rules will determine when we restore your right to drive. Understood? Yes, sir. If I get any more calls from outraged citizens, you don't know where to find me. Thanks. Thanks for what you did. Uh, I did very little. Like the captain said, plenty of people wanted to see me go to jail. Well, an accident like that makes people feel uneasy, guilty. Someone's got to be punished. As soon as the newspapers give them another story, they'll forget. I should have stopped them somehow. You tried. That's not good enough. Look, I built that car for him. I gave it to him. It was my responsibility. Mine too. Not the same way. I really lost you up too. Now don't worry, the captain will cool down. But we've got a fight on our hands save the drag strip and the other kids. I'm counting on your help, Jeff. Don't. But you can't give up now. If you quit, a lot of the others will too. The strip's not a habit with them yet. They only go because you and Lisa have led them there. I'm not thinking of the others. I'm thinking of Steve. There'll be a lot of other kids end up like Steve if we let them close the strip. It didn't save him. You're not being fair, Jeff. That's the way I feel. I've had it. What about Flat Top, Two Tanks, and the others? They all look up to you. Well, no more. Let somebody else be responsible. In his garage. Hello, Mr. Fry. This is Lisa Vernon. Hello, Lisa. Yeah, he's here. Fine, I'll call him. Telephone, Jeff. Know who it is? Lisa. Oh, come on, Jeff. Why don't you talk to her? Hello, Lisa. Hi, Jeff. I didn't disturb you, did I? That's okay. There's a meet at the strip tomorrow. How about my picking you up? Thanks, but we're loaded with work. I can't get away. But you've got to relax sometime. You can't go on working around the clock. Besides, the kids were just... I appreciate your calling, but I just can't make it. Sure. Sure, Jeff. See ya. Yeah. They don't scrape the white sidewalk. Fast and safe to go, Lisa. The kids are dragging the strip.
Oh, sure. Baby's rock and roll lullaby. <laughs> Where you been, Lisa? Out at the strip. With Jeff. I thought you'd all be out there. Eh, who needs it? I heard they were going to close the dome. You know, I never felt relaxed out there. For once, we agree. Rules and regulations. Phew. So confining. You know, if they force Ben to close the strip, the next step will be to outlaw hot rods. Ah, so let them. It'll make the squares happy. They wouldn't dare. Why, my whole wardrobe's designed for hot rodding. Tell that to the city council, LP. Jeff meeting you here, Lisa? Gee, I haven't seen you together in just weeks. LP, how much does Yo-Yo pay you to haunt this place? Can a girl take a friendly interest? Friendly? You got more needles than a Christmas tree. I'm afraid since the accident, Jeff's been keeping pretty much to himself. Yeah, he's been doing everything but sleep in that garage. He's got strictly no time for comedy. Poor Jeff. Maybe no one's tried the right approach. Now, I've been told that I have a certain way of drawing people out. You know, people respond to me in a very different way than they do to ordinary girls. I don't exactly know what the secret of my success is, but... Long play. That's enough surface noise. Take it off the turntable, doll. Oh, that was close. I thought she was in the old microgroove again. Maybe if all of us went to get Jeff, you'd be wasting your time. Ah, gourmets, attention. Here's old Yo-Yo with a tray full of tomei. <laughs> tomei, oh, this is all strictly grade A. Sure, for the stomachache deluxe, dine at Yo-Yo's. Personal insults I'm used to. But if you kids start running down my food... Running it down? Never. I said it before and I'll say it again. Everything Yo-Yo serves is swill. Uh, swell. <laughs> Pay first. What's the matter? Don't you trust us? You named it. Why don't you check our credit rating before you take our order? If you don't like my way of doing business, why do you come here? You're a father to us. What an awful thought. We come here because it's just like home. Yeah. Our folks don't trust us either. <laughs> <laughs> you want anything? No, thanks. With my talent, I could have been a great chef. And so, how do I end up serving my delicacies to hot rods? It's better than cotton caviar to creeps. Hey, this is a Canadian dime. So, take a trip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about taking a faster up the dry lake? What for? You can really get a heap rolling up there. Wasn't that where Pee Wee Stone cracked up? Pee Wee got careless. Come on, how about a flat top? I don't know. A person could die of boredom around here. Highway patrol. The watch that place pretty close. Not anymore. It's wide open. <laughs> the cops are all out at the drag strip. Hey, you're not cutting out already, are you? I may be back. See ya. So Bye. long, Lisa. Later, Lisa. Well, Lisa sure isn't firing an all eight without Jeff. It's awful how dependent us girls become. There are moments when I ask myself, LP, what would you do without a sensitive, generous, Understanding man like two tanks. And what's your answer? I'd starve. Starve? So be sensitive, generous, understanding. And order me another sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> How's it look? Rough. Rings won't do. It'll need a reboard. You know, it's funny how a little respect drivers have for their cars. But if they all felt like you did, I'd soon be out of business. <laughs> Why don't you call it a day? Well, thanks. I'll stick around a while. Working too hard, Jeff. 12, 14 hours a day. You look tired. I like being tired. Yeah, I know. Hello, Mr. Fry. How is he? Same. You got company, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Lisa. Having trouble with the bird? No, it's running fine. I'm worried about you, Jeff. I'm all right. Will you stop and listen to me a minute? Don't you think I have any pride? Do you think it's easy for me to come here? I'm sorry, Lisa, but the I just... The last thing I want is an apology. But I do have a right to know what's happened between us. You wouldn't understand. 
I've tried to understand, to be patient. But somehow I just... Lisa, please, it's got nothing to do with you. It's just you don't know what it's like. Nobody does until it happens to them. What about when my dad was killed? I didn't shut you out. It's not the same thing. You had nothing to do with it. I was responsible for Steve. For his death. Oh, you know that isn't true. Isn't it? Who taught him to drive? Who bought him a car and hopped it up? Who was with him when he... Everything I do, everyone I see makes me think of him. Just when I think I can forget a little, I look at you, or talk to Flattop, or Ben calls me. I'm right back where I started. I thought if I could work hard enough, got tired enough, I'd stop going over and over it. But every time I lift the hood of a car, I look at an engine, I see the one I built for him. But you can't stop living, Jeff. And it isn't fair to cut off the people who need you. Was it fair for a kid like Steve to be killed before it even started to live? No. But shutting yourself away like this and trying to kill yourself with work isn't going to bring Steve back. You're so busy feeling sorry for yourself, you don't even know what's going on. Kids are starting to act up. It could lead to trouble, serious trouble. They're old enough to know what they're doing. But you can stop them. They listen to you. Lisa, I told you before, what they do is none of my business. Then it doesn't matter if next time it's flat top or two times. Lisa, stop it. Will you please leave me alone? All right, Jeff. Lisa. Don't give up. He needs you. Give him time. He'll come around. I will. Someone crashed the sound barrier? Who wheeled in the big gun? I didn't recognize the car. Sounds like he's using dynamite. He doesn't have to use it. He is dynamite. Okay, what do you want, brawn or brains? I'm not particular, but I'm entitled to one or the other. Ah, a sightseer. And he likes one of the sights he sees. Of course, Lisa, it's none of my business. That's right, LP, it's none of your business. But if my boyfriend had turned hermit and a good-looking somebody gave me the high frequency signal... Boss Reinish, what shall he be? Your place is crawling with hot rodders. One pest you can't control. Cops give you much trouble? Not like it used to be, before they got the drag strip. I'm new in this bird. You know where I can get some work done in my car? Me? I know nothing about cars. These kids could tell you, if you can understand what they are talking about. The mystery man's coming this way. Maybe he's going to make a pass. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Who asked you? I hear you guys are rod jockey. Yeah. Want to see our licenses? I'm looking for information, not laughs. Where's the garage? Sounds to me more like you need a piano tuner. Mm. Very funny. A big, strong man like you. Why don't you fix it yourself? Cutie, I drive. Let the grease monkeys fix it. Try Henley's garage, a block east and two blocks and a half north. Ask for Jeff. Thanks. When I get my coffee pot perkin, maybe some of you cats would like a lesson. What's the subject? I don't limit myself. You'll find us here, teacher. You too? I wouldn't count on it. Well, they told me this was a friendly town. I'm the exception. We'll have to work on that. See you around. Well, there's a nervy one. 
Oh, no, that guy's got to be kidding. And that's not all. My woman's intuition tells me he's going to know you the next time he sees you. I can hardly wait. When I get my coffee pot perkin, maybe some of you cats would like a lesson. Uh. <laughs> Hello. What can we do for you? You got a greaseball here by the name of Jeff? We got a mechanic here named Jeff. Well, I want him to do some work on my car. Jeff. Someone asking for you. Yeah? Some of the squirrels have a yo-yos. Tell me you're the most. What seems to be the trouble? She jumps and misses between 35 and 50. Start your motor. You build this? Me? No, nah, I bought it from some character who was short of cash. Well? Points, plugs, carburetor, everything's gummed up. You know, a motor like this takes real care if it's going to give you the performance that's built into it. Better go Hold like this. Hold it, Buster. I'm here for service, not a sermon. This is my heap, and I'll do with it as I please. Now, are you going to tune it up or not? Bring it in tomorrow. We'll take care of it. And don't try anything fancy just because I'm new around here. I know all the tricks you mechanics use. But you were going to hit him, Jeff. I wanted to. I may yet. After he pays his bill. I do, officer. I saw you rev out of that intersection. So I got a hot car. I was only doing 35. It's a 35-mile zone, isn't it? Not a question of how fast you were driving. You kids have a strip for this kind of jockeying. We've got to ride on the streets. Keep on driving this way and you won't have. Yes, sir. I could give you a ticket, but I'm not going to. Now watch your step. This is your last warning. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. Thank Ben Merrill. I think you know what I mean. I'm confused. Explain it to her. You're asking a lot, officer. Hope I'd find you here, Ben. Anything wrong? Look, you know we were trying to play ball with you, and for a while it seemed to be working, but lately the kids are getting wilder than ever. A lot of violations? Near misses, you know, jumping the light, cutting in and out of traffic. But if it keeps up, we'll get orders to nail them for walking across the street. Have you made many arrests? They were warning them. Sooner or later, it's going to bust wide open. The chief knew about it. He'd have our heads for it. Thanks, Pat. I'll see what I can do. Here's a list of entries, Ben. Did you hear, Pat? Pretty soon it will be as bad as it was when we started here. We could sure use Jeff. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. Would you try once more? I wouldn't ask you, Lisa. I didn't think it was important for the kids and Jeff. Oh, 
Nobody says to me, you can thank Ben Merrill, Pete. She says I'm confused. <laughs> Explain it to her. That's asking an awful lot, officer. <laughs> Fetching someone? Jeff was supposed to meet me here at 2. You keep staring at the clock, and handsome Harry keeps staring at you. You could do worse. Look at me. <laughs> you always save your insults till after you eat. Food sharpens my wits. It opens my eyes. Lisa, haven't you noticed the torch you're carrying is all smoke and no fire? Lay off. Look, LP. What we're trying to tell you is what Lisa does is her own business. It's all right, Judy. Don't play it so high and mighty. All of you think the same as I do. You just don't say it. We think and don't say it, LP. You say it and don't think. It's just sinful, that's all. Pretty girl like Lisa sitting around, watching clocks, waiting for the phone to ring. All because of someone who's forgotten any of us are around. LP, flip the record. Listen, I was as sorry for Jeff as any of you. But to go on like this week after week, and he's got a girl like Lisa waiting, and all she asks is... Oh, is... Two things, can't you feed her? Dance with a Jagger. You heard the man. Let's struggle. That's right. Rush me away. Just when I'm trying to be helpful. You're not being helpful. Okay. So I made a mistake. Your parents made a mistake. Suppose I give him a call. Thanks, but forget it. Minuet? Hi. Still feeling unfriendly? I'm afraid so. Now you got me puzzled. How come a sharp chick like you always plays it solo? Please, if you don't mind. Look, you're alone. I'm alone. Can I give you any ideas? I'm not alone. I'm with friends. Don't kid me. I've watched you ever since I hit this town and... Don't go away. Hey, what's the pitch, screwball? One side, little man, or I'll step on you. Hey, I had two bits invested in that machine. Yeah. Here's a refund. Get lost. What's the matter? You anti-social? We want to dance. Put the plug in, flat top. Sure. Why me? It was your quarter. Well, somebody do something. What's the panic? King Kong yanked the cord. Oh, he did, did he? Look here, mister. You can't just come to this establishment and... I mean, is that nice? I'm buying two bits worth of quiet, okay? We came here to dance. You don't like music, find yourself a cave. Please, please, let's settle this piece. I got some important things to say. I don't need background music. You gonna let him get away with this? What's the matter with you heroes? Flat top, start the music. <clears throat> you were saying? Well, what am I running? Madison Square's garden? The management don't allow no brides in this establishment. Please. I don't want trouble, Yo-Yo. Just music. I'll call the Lord, so help me, if you so much as make a fist. So I got a jukebox, flat top. Big Sir Monkey Wrench. He's real nervy when he knows there can't be a fight. There's a big parking lot outside. Sure, out there. Be my guest. Now look who's yellow. I think you like you ought to drive a sharp car. You coming outside? You worked on mine, you know what I can do. Listen to him, he's talking cars to cover being chicken. Get in a rod and I'll show you who's chicken. I don't have a car. You can use mine, Jeff. I can't drive. And even if I could, I wouldn't use a car to settle an argument. Okay. Then we won't have music. Uh, not so fast, alligator. Look, pocket pest, didn't I make it clear? I'm giving the orders. I don't take orders from a chicken. Big talk. I got a car to back it up. More man in the junior side. Let's roll, buddy boy. Don't be a dope flat top. There are worse things. Sorry I was late, Lisa. I got tied up to the garage. Lisa, will you come with me? Please. I'm scared for flat top. 
Will you come? No. Please, if you've got to come with me. Why do I have to run a hangout for lunatics? I'll have a cup of coffee, Yo-Yo. What do I get out of it? Insults, headaches, jobs. Or to all be locked up where they can't hurt nobody. Now you, you got some sense. You played it smart. You did just right, Jack. But that flat up. Well, if he wants to go get himself killed, it's his business. Right? Yo, yo, do me a favor. Please shut up. Take that in and I'll take the other, okay? Okay. I'll give you three quick blasts on my horn when I'm set. You answer me with three. Then we both count one, two, three, and take off. Now we straddle the white line right down the middle. Barrel towards each other and... Uh... You want to crawl out? That's the spirit. We all got to go sometime. I'm set. Let's get together. Real soon. What happened to him? He's trying to prove something, but what I don't know. Well, crazy, that's what it is. Completely crazy. Now what? It's up to them. They're going in different directions. They'll turn around. And come back toward each other? chicken like this before. Have you? No, but I heard about it. It takes real nerve. Suppose, suppose neither one of them gives. Yeah. I just can't sit here and wait for but it's too late.
laptop. Anybody else feeling lucky? He's crazy. Completely crazy. Okay, chickens, head for your roost. It's a deal. I was nuts, squirrely. Playing I mean, chicken with a king size maniac. From now on, yours truly is gonna be one big fat coward. That's my boy. Congratulations. I'm warning you, kitten. I don't give up easy. Where's Flattop? What's it to you? Is he okay, Lisa? At least the guy tried before he chickened out. You should have come along, Jeff. You really missed something. Exciting. Too exciting for me. Imagine, too exciting for me. I had to close my eyes just to see... Uh, 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 uh. He's okay, Jeff. He'll be along any minute. Everyone having a good time? Why, Officer Merrill, what a pleasant surprise. Seems I'm a little late for the main event. Any casualties? On the dance floor? In your chicken race. What are you giving us? I had a report this gang was street racing. You got a bum squeal, mister. Some wise guy wanted to stir up a storm. It's been real quiet here. Well, my source was reliable. How about it? Anyone know anything about a street race? You taking orders from this guy now? Who's giving orders? What's your name? Talbot, Bob Talbot. New in town? What do you do? I'm retired. You're a little old for this crowd, aren't you? I'm young at heart. How long you been here, Jeff? Not long. Did you come before or after they left for the street race? I asked the question, Jeff. I don't know anything, Ben. Now look, you've got a responsibility to these people. I've got no responsibility to anyone. But that's the way it is. Jeff. Jeff, I hoped I'd see him. I don't know what got into me, but I just... Well, what's eating him? I just wanted to tell him I was sorry, that he was right. Right about what, Flattop? You want a ride home? Ben sent you after me. It was my own idea. And I guess not a very good one. Lisa? Lisa, I've got no right to hurt you. If the offer still stands, I'd appreciate a ride. Blacktop, I'm giving you one last chance to tell me a straight story. Okay. You won't level with me. Well, maybe somebody around here will tell me what's happening to you kids. I've gone to bat for you, defended you, fought to get you the drag strip, stood between you and people who wanted to crack down on you. Now, isn't that true? So what happens? Your boy caught the strip, you pick up more citations every day, and a few minutes ago, you broke every rule in the book. Well, I've tried. But obviously, you don't want to play it my way. That's too sane, too sensible. All right, but take a word of warning. 
One more hot rod accident in this town and you'll all lose your license. Now, if you want to boot everything we've tried to accomplish for a few cheap thrills, well, I can't stop you. But at least you know where I stand. What's on the other side of that record? Hearts and flowers? Watch your step, Talbot. I know you ranked one of these kids into playing chicken. Luckily, no one was hurt. Now, don't push your luck or my patience, or you'll find yourself... <laughs> I've always wondered what kind of a place you lived in. Nothing special. Cheap, handy. I won't stay long. Nice. Not much like your place. You don't have to do that. I like to. I usually do better than this, but... Lately, I... I know. Oh, a kitchen, too. A converted closet. Let me fix you something to eat. Well, thanks, but I'm not very hungry. Coffee? I'd like a cup. Okay. Hope I can make a drinkable cup of coffee. Haven't had much practice. Lisa? Mm-hmm? I'm sorry for the way I've acted. Things I've said. It's like I couldn't help it. I'd think about you, even start to call you. And I'd think about Steve. And that horrible, guilty feeling had come back. And I couldn't call you, couldn't face you or anyone. But shutting yourself away from everything only prolongs the hurt. I realize that now. Besides, Steve wouldn't have wanted it that way. You know how he felt about us. Yeah. I always took us for granted till this happened. You and me being together. It just had to be. Oh, Lisa. You, Jeff. Don't ever shut me out again. You know, you have such a nice face. It's a workable face. It's nice to see the crinkles again. You know, I think you'd better go. Can I wait for my coffee? I'll buy you tomorrow. All right. I'll walk you down to the car. Don't bother. Tomorrow's Sunday, big day at the strip. How about it? Okay. Was there a street race or wasn't there? There was, Captain, but... Who did you arrest? No one. I didn't have any evidence. There's your evidence, a dozen complaints. What kind of an answer am I going to give these people? I know who set up that chicken race yesterday. Well, why didn't you pull him in? No proof. He's new in town. I checked on him this morning. He's got quite a record of traffic violations in the state. Well, let's tie a can to him. We got plenty of homegrown headaches without importing any. I've got an idea that might work. I'd like to handle this boy my way. All right. Here we go again. But remember, there's no margin for error. One more slip and we're... There won't be any. Now, keep me posted.
morning. Hello, Ben. Awfully quiet. Great, ain't it? No yammering kits, no exploding hot rods. I've been reading the Horse Breeders Quarterly. You're thinking of raising horses? Not me personally. But I've been wondering if maybe I could have a place that catered to the horse, he said. Folks who ride horses is genteel, don't you think? Well, I haven't any connections in the horse, he said. Where are your uh, customers and my problem? To go for the drag strip, maybe 15 minutes ago. Well, that's encouraging. Jeff Northrup heard of the mountain. Good. What about Lisa? She went with him. Just a second, Talbot. Write me a letter. He's been asking me about Lisa before you came in. I played it dumb. Thanks, Yo-Yo. <laughs> Tell me from yo-yos. You're quite a cowboy. I don't know what the traffic laws are where you come from, Talbot, but we don't want our city streets used as a three-ring circus. Skip the lectures. If you're going to give me a ticket, do it. It's not quite that simple. You've got quite a record in this state. I checked into it. Now, if I haul you in, my boss is going to tear up your license. He wouldn't get away with it. Well, I think he would. He knows about your record, and he's down on hot rodders. You cops. Just because now, of look, I... I could haul you in, but I'd rather not. I'm going to give you a choice. Follow me out to the drag strip and see how some real hot rodders handle their cars, or I'll take you in and book you for reckless driving. That's a choice. Blackmail. It's a better break than you deserve. Now, which is it going to be? You're wearing the badge. I'll go to the strip. I was going there anyway. When we get there, we'll see how good this car of yours really is. What do you call the place again, Jeff? Thanks, Blattop. Hey, Jeff, I tried to tell you yesterday, but you didn't give me the chance. But you were right all the way. I was a dope to fall for that chicken race. Forget it. Hey, uh, everything okay with you and Lisa? Yeah. What does the best man wear? Spike Levi's? <laughs> Must be seeing things. Is that for real, Jeff? Ben's got a new playmate. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Ben. Good to see you back. Makes the place look like home. Nice to be back. Uh, you know Bronk Talbot. He's developed a sudden interest in the drag strip. After he's looked it over, he might even be persuaded to race. Well. Aren't we lucky? Yeah, you and the rest of the squares might just as well go home. Oh, why don't you let the others have their fun? They don't realize the mostest has arrived. They will. Just like you did. After inspection, your car will be classified over there. Let's go. Hello, Lisa.
Lisa. Hi, Ben. Think I'd forgotten about you, kitten? Put your pants away and come with me. Sorry, I'm busy. I thought I'd drop out and teach those snails the lesson. But keep an eye on me and I'll show you how it's done. I wouldn't miss it. We'll be back. After inspection, you can classify Mr. Talbot. I've got him classified. This is the place to test your car, see what it'll really do. You can let off steam without risking Maybe any... Maybe I should have let you run me in. Do I get to drive it, don't I? Well, I thought you'd be interested in it. The change. only thing that interests me is teaching those prize pupils how to handle a car. All right. Let's start you through the inspection. Slapping okay in the seat, but let me roll. Take off your hubcaps. Do it yourself. If you want an inspection okay, mister, take off your hubcaps. All right, big man. I'll play it your way. For now. Pass the car, Ben. What are you handing me? Front motor mount's not bolted down. No safety cover on the flywheel. No cotter pin in the front wheel. Boy, am I getting some runaround. Your car's a hazard, Bronk. Needs a lot of work. But he just worked it over a few days ago. I did the work you ordered. And I also told There's you There's nothing that... wrong with it. This is a frame. You dragged me out here so this chicken could make me look like a jerk. Why, you... All right, Bronk. Clear out. Afraid to let a real driver on this kiddie strip. Get your car in shape and you can come back. Fat chance. And I'll get you yet. I guess I made a mistake. Thanks, Jeff, for keeping your head. What are you going to do about him? I don't know. I should have hauled him down to headquarters. But I wanted to give him a break to try to help him. He doesn't want help. Just trouble. If he comes looking for it, Jeff, disappoint him. I'll try. Come on, I'll buy you soda. Oh, incidentally, as far as I'm concerned, your probation is over. Well, you mean I can drive? Just take it easy. You can count on that. Thanks, Ben. Hear that, honey? I'm a free man. Well, not entirely. Brock actually thought I kept him off the strip just to make him look foolish. I'm afraid Ben's wasting his time with him. I'm afraid so. Well, it feels good to be driving again.
out in the middle of the road. He's crazy. We're going to try to pull clear of them. Try. Lisa's all right. Her mother's with her. Good. The boy? He's dead. Can I go now? I told you all I know. Don't decide to leave town suddenly. Why should I? I didn't kill the kid. Did you hit the boy, Jeff? I don't know, Ben. It happened so fast. I was on the wrong side of the street when I went around that curve. Of course, Bronk was chasing him, trying to force him off the road and Jeff... I saw the boy. I tried to cut away. He fell. I guess I hit him, Ben. I don't know. Well, I'll speak to Lisa tomorrow. She may remember. Can I take him home now? I'm sorry. Jeff will have to come with me. You arresting him? I haven't any choice. Kid, an innocent little kid on a bike, on his own side of the road. And who hits him? Your fair-haired boy on the day you lift his probation. Return his license to kill. I told you, Captain, Jeff was forced into this. Even if it was his car that hit the child, the circumstances... Oh, were... stop it, Ben. Nobody's interested in circumstances. Northup was paroled in my department after his brother's death. We lift the parole. Bang, he's involved in another fatal accident. Bronk Talbot was the instigator. The child's death is his moral responsibility. Look, I played it your way, Ben. But this is the end. I've got the department to think of. My own job. I'm too old to start over. The mayor, the council, the whole town, screaming man. They want the old eye for an eye. So, what do you want me to do? It's not what I want. They've asked me to... Close the drag strip, slap a ban on all hot rods, and ask for your resignation. What about Jeff? His boss posted bail. He's facing a manslaughter charge, and I expect the boy's parents will hit him with a civil suit. He's in serious trouble. Am I relieved of duty? Ben, I'm sorry. Don't be. I never thought you'd give me as much rope as you did. I've got a noose around my neck, but I haven't started a swing. Not yet, anyway. Mother, I'm sorry. 
fine. Please don't hurry. All right. Goodbye. Hello, Ben. Hello, Lisa. How do you feel? Oh, I'm fine. How is he? No, not so good. He's out on bail, thanks to Henry. What do you think will happen to him? I don't know. He's in real hot water. But it wasn't his fault. Unfortunately, it won't be easy to make a jury believe that. Lisa, did you see your car actually hit the boy? No, I was looking at Jeff. What does he say? Well, he's not sure, but Bronx swears it was your car. Naturally, he would. You heard him threaten Jeff at the strip. He'll, he'll do anything to try to get even. Which makes it all more difficult to prove Jeff's innocence. Can you pick up Jeff and meet me at Yo-Yo's in an hour? All right. Good. Oh, Ben. I guess you know how much we appreciate what you're doing for us. Forget it. I've got a big stake in this, too. See you at Yo-Yo's. Morning. Hoped I'd find you here, Talbot. How many times do I have to go over my story? The truth bears repeating. Coffee, please. Sure terrible about Jeff. They'll throw the book at him, I suppose. If they can prove he's guilty. Prove it? I saw it happen. Are you sure you're telling us everything you saw? Now I get it. They tied the can to you because of your pigeon. Now you're looking for a patsy. Oh, keep looking. I was just checking the scene of the accident. So? The skid marks are very interesting. Jeff's car appears to have skidded off the road 50 feet before the point of impact. On the other hand, your skid trail goes right through the point where the child was hit and 100 feet beyond. You smart cop, you're not going to pin any manslaughter rap on me. Northrop's guilty. Well, under the circumstances, you won't object to a closer inspection of your car. What for? I noticed you had it washed. Any law against that? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. What I wanted was a chemical comparison of your car's finish with the paint flakes found on the dead child's bicycle. I've already got my sample. My car? You had no right to do that. If you're telling the truth, you've got nothing to worry about. Look nervous. Stick around, Talbot. I have a feeling you'll be hearing from me soon. Very soon. I'm going out. Don't try to stop me. I'm warning you. Don't get in my way.
Thanks, Jeff. Looks like you've settled an old score. What started it? An envelope with paint scrapings from his car. Did he admit to hitting the boy? Well, he might as well have. He's already confessed by his actions. I've got a lump in my head to prove it. You think everything will be all right now? Well, we've still got a fight on our hands. But now the evidence is on our side. I'm afraid I gave you one chance too many, Talbot. Let's go. Do you want us to go with you? No, thanks. That won't be necessary. Right now, I'm going to see a man about a badge. We've got to begin our project from scratch. Are you with me? When do we start? Man, that is Southern California down to its core. Even the lead couple's surnames. Northrop, of course, for Northrop Aviation in Hawthorne, just south of L.A., and Vernon, a city also south of L.A. that markets itself as being exclusively industrial and boasts a 2010 census count of 112 people. Also, the San Fernando drag strip was a real place from 1955 to 1970. It was near the corner of Glen Oaks Boulevard and Arroyo Avenue in the valley. Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys raced his two Shelby Cobras there in the 60s. Oh, and that, that sweet 55 T-Bird that Lori Nelson drove, it was the actress's personal car. She offered to use it in the picture to the utter delight of the cash-strapped producers. I hope you enjoyed it, and until our next adventure in the Attic of Orphan Pictures, so long for now.